In this video, I'll run you through the steps needed to get an Ubuntu desktop running on your iPad Raspberry Pi combo. If you're not familiar with what the iPad Pi combo is and what you can do with it, see my video explaining the setup in detail over here. By the end of this video, you'll be able to access a full Ubuntu desktop running on your Raspberry Pi directly from your iPad. Ubuntu for the Pi comes in two flavors, server and desktop, with only the desktop variant having a GUI out of the box. Sadly, I've been unable to get the desktop variant to work reliably with the USB-C Ethernet connection used in this setup. However, there is a workaround. We can install the Ubuntu desktop GUI on top of Ubuntu server. The easiest place to start is with my pre-built Ubuntu server image, which you can download from GitHub, link in the description. And then using the Raspberry Pi Imager software, if you come to choose OS, scroll to the bottom and make sure you choose use custom, and then you can select the downloaded file, press open, choose storage, making sure you have your SD card inserted, and I'm gonna select that SD card there. And before we press right, we'll come down here and press on the cog icon, and we're gonna customize our image. You can pre-fill your Wi-Fi password here, you don't have to configure Wi-Fi during the setup, but it does make it easier to recover from any mistakes because you can connect to the Pi over Wi-Fi if you need to. So I'm gonna pre-fill my Wi-Fi details from the Apple keychain, and then I'm going to make sure I set a host name. We're gonna use this host name later. I'm just gonna use UB Pi, Ubuntu Pi. Make sure you enable SSH. You can choose any username here, but I'm gonna stick with the default. Just make sure you remember which one you choose. Give a password. I've got my Wi-Fi already connected. I'll enable my locale, make sure I'm in. London GB, and I'm just going to choose to uh, leave the media in and then press save. Now press right and say yes when prompted to erase the SD card and you'll have to type in your password one more time. Once the image is burned to the SD card, pop it in the Pi, connect the Pi and the iPad over USB-C and after a few minutes you'll see the USB Ethernet adapter appear in the iOS settings app. This means we can now connect to the Pi over SSH. I'm using Blink Shell to connect but any SSH iPad app will do. If you're not interested in getting a GUI set up, then you can stop here. This is a fully functional Ubuntu server setup. But if you do want the GUI, then we have a few more steps that we need to do. So connected to the Pi over SSH, we'll start by installing the necessary software packages. We need Ubuntu-desktop-minimal and Tiger-bnc-standalone-server. The minimal desktop excludes a few optional packages and is my preferred starting point for this setup, but you can go for the full desktop if you choose. We'll use Tiger VNC to set up a remote desktop connection with the iPad. It can take about 10 to 15 minutes for both of these packages to install, so don't worry if the process seems to be taking a little while or even if it seems to have stalled for a few minutes. With these packages installed, we have a few bits of configuration we need to make our VNC remote desktop fully functional. Let's dive in. So firstly, we need to create a password for VNC, which we do with the VNC password command. I'm just gonna type in a password. And you don't have to set a view only password, so I'll choose no. Okay, so that's the password piece done. So next up, we need to configure a VNC display for our user, and we can double check our username with who am I. And what we're gonna do is edit with sudo the etc tiger VNC VNC users file. Type in your password at the bottom here colon two equals pi, which is my user. I'm gonna write that out to disk. This assigns VNC display two to the pi user. You can use any number greater than two, but make sure you remember which number you use because we need it later on. So now we need to tell Tiger VNC how it should configure our desktop session when it starts. And we do this with an X startup file inside the dot VNC directory under our home directory. So first off, I'll make sure that that directory exists. It does, and then we'll edit the file x startup inside .vnc and I have the contents here to paste. I'll put a link in the description to a page on my website where you can see all these commands and find the content for all the config files that way you don't have to worry about trying to transcribe it from the video. So let's write this out. We need to make that file executable which we'll do with chmod plus x and then the path to the file. So now it can actually run. So now we can start tiger vnc which we'll do with sudo system ctl start tiger vnc server at and then colon two. If you use a different number for your VNC display, then you'll use a different number here. You want this Tiger VNC session to start automatically when the Pi boots up, then you can do that with systemctl enable like this. With VNC running on the Pi, it's time to connect from the iPad. And I'm gonna use an app called Jump Desktop as my VNC client. Jump is available on the app store for about $15, which is not cheap. And I have no affiliation with the Jump team, but it is an excellent client and I certainly feel like it was worth the money. So to add a new configuration inside Jump, we'll come up here and click on the plus icon in the top right. And for, we're gonna click VNC to make sure this is a VNC configuration. And for host, we're gonna choose localhost. 
We're not going to set the host name of the Pi. And the reason for this is we need to create a secure tunnel from the iPad to the Pi. And we'll do that in just a second. So localhost and then port 5902. And again, if you used a different display number other than two, you'll use that number here. Let's press save. Before we connect to this, because it won't work, because we're trying to connect to localhost, press on the I icon here, choose edit. I'm going to make a few changes. So come down here to the bottom where it says SSH tunnel. Press on that. Press add SSH server. Now type in the host name of the Pi, which we set right back at the beginning when we burned the SD card. Mine is ubpi.local. Username is Pi. You may have changed yours during your configuration. And then press save. Come back to details. I'd like to do one more thing here, which is uh, give this a nice name. And configure the Ubuntu icon. We press done. Now we can click on this. And we'll connect. First off, you're asked for the SSH password. This is the password of your Pi user that you configured when you burn the SD card. You can choose to save that, which I will do. And then next up, we have to do accept the SSH fingerprint. That's fine. And now we have to pass in the VNC password that we set earlier on. And I'm also going to save that. Okay, great. Here we have the... Ubuntu desktop running on the iPad. And you'll see there's a few things here, like it's prompting me to restart and I need to get rid of this thing. I'm just going to bring up this desktop. And the first thing I want to do is run through the setup wizard. So press start setup. And you can basically go through this pretty quickly. Make sure you skip a network step. So next, And then press start using Ubuntu. The reason why we're skipping the network step is because the, the network manager software, which is called network manager that Ubuntu desktop uses, doesn't seem to work very well with the USB-C Ethernet thing. And we have to use the Ubuntu server network software, which is called NetPlan. You may need to reboot. I'm going to do that later. And we could kind of just leave things as they are, but I like to make a few more tweaks to the UI just to make this whole setup look a little bit nicer. So the first thing I'm going to do is if I come to activities, come down here to the applications and bring up the terminal. I want to make that dock show permanently on the desktop. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And then now we're going to run GNOME DAS extensions enable ubuntu-dock at ubuntu.com. And there we go. We've now got the dock enabled permanently, which makes accessing your applications much, much easier. Now, you might notice that we're not actually using the full screen here, and we can fix that by creating a new config file for our VNC. So we'll do vim.vnc slash config. And here we want to add one line geometry equals 2388 by 1668. You should change this to match the resolution of your device. I'm using an 11 inch iPad Pro, which has this resolution, but you can tweak it to your needs. So I'll just save that to disk. And then we need to restart VNC now. So we can do sudo systemctl restart tiger vnc server at colon two that's our session type in our password and we'll get booted out press try again and now we'll reconnect and now you can see that the screen is occupying the whole of my ipad screen but it's gone very small and we can fix that too. So if we come down to the, the show applications down here, come to settings, come to displays and press 200% scale and press apply. Choose keep changes. And now we have a much nicer display that takes up the full screen on the iPad. There's one more tweak that you might make. I don't make this tweak because I think it affects the performance too much. But if you come back into jump and press on the three dots here and come to the uh, settings icon, you can choose to go high color. Let's press that. And you can see it kind of removes the color banding, but it really does make the performance a lot worse. So I like to keep it on 16-bit color. Okay, that's it. Ubuntu server and Ubuntu desktop running on a Raspberry Pi and accessed over VNC from the iPad. It's a great setup if you like to use the Linux desktop. I'm much more of a terminal user myself, but I do keep this around because it's occasionally quite nice to dive in and use some graphical Linux applications, and this is a really elegant setup. 
I hope you found this video useful. I hope you found it entertaining. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and maybe hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.